G'day folks and welcome back to another check on chain update for the 26th of August. Well, today I want to take you through part one of a report that we released on Friday to our premium subscribers over at checkonchain.com. And this is really a set of tools, metrics, and really concepts and ideas that I'm going to be using to spot the next top. Now, this is not necessarily the top, right? The cyclical top, which everybody's looking for, it will follow all of these different metrics. We will see it show up in this. But of course, we never know when the top is the top. We only really know that after the fact. Every global top starts off as what could just be a local top. And what's very useful about these types of tools is we can really combat FOMO. So in many ways, I don't particularly want to be buying my Bitcoin when lots and lots of investors are taking large profits, putting a lot of sell side pressure on the market, and ultimately probably reducing my chances of being you know, happy a week later. Ultimately, I want to be looking for opportunities on the other side of that, because what goes up must come down. So ultimately, these are tools that will help us spot the global top. They're tools that will help us spot a local top. And at the end of the day, it helps us combat FOMO and avoid making the wrong decision and kind of getting caught up with all the hype at the wrong time. So this is actually a topic that we're only just starting to cover over at the Check on Chain News. We've spent a lot of time talking about chop solidation, which is this kind of sideways grinding process. We've really spent, I mean, several months in here, and the thesis was that we would be able to close our eyes, would be at the exact same price, but ultimately, longs and shorts would be liquidated. We wrote that report back in April at, uh, at about 64,000, and here we are, according to my block clock, at pretty much exactly 64,000. We've gone up to the highs, we've gone down to the lows, and yet we're at the exact same price. So chop solidation has been a big theme. We've also been looking at what would happen if we were to trade lower. We've got a series of models and tools to just prepare our mind and be ready so that if we were to sell off, is it really the end of the world or is it more of an opportunity? The one topic we haven't covered and we're starting to at the moment is what happens when the next rally comes along. And ultimately, we want to lay some of the groundwork so we know what tools, metrics, concepts, prepare ourselves to make better decisions as the market moves on from here. So as I mentioned at the start, this will be part one of this series. Um, if you are interested in checking out the rest of the video and the rest of our content, um, head over to checkonchain.com. But otherwise, enjoy this particular episode. We're going to look at the tools I use, the pricing models that I consider, and ultimately, how do we describe sell-side pressure? How do we avoid FOMO by not making a decision when all the smart money is doing the opposite? Let's get stuck into it. Okay, so what we're going to do is step through this concept of how high is too high, right? So the market eventually is going to run. It's going to want to move to the upside. And the important part about this is that this is when FOMO builds up. Bull markets are really difficult to navigate for a couple of reasons. The first one is that what is overheated can get extremely overheated, right? The big variable and the big thing that we just can never predict is demand. Demand is the ultimate unknown in a bull. We don't know who's going to hit the green button, when they're going to do it, and with what size. We just simply don't know these things and we can never predict it. What we can predict, or probably more correctly, what we can measure is when the sell side will come in to meet that demand. We know that hodlers have a certain level where they're willing to take chips off the table. And ultimately, that's what on-chain data is going to be super helpful at helping us understand and gauge. So the idea here is we're not looking for the Pico top. What we're looking for is points when investor sentiment changes and when it shifts and actually moves to a different environment, these are the kind of, uh, you know, we start to be cautious, right? And if I think about this from my hodler mentality, I don't particularly want to buy my Bitcoin at a huge premium when lots and lots of guys are taking profit and selling on my head. I kind of want to be that guy who's, you know, at least even if I'm not selling, I want to be aware that they're selling and perhaps not buying at the exact wrong time because FOMO is a motion that does and will step in. It is extremely hard to counter. I use on-chain data to counter that FOMO and try to keep myself level. So let's start really big picture. We're going to start with long-term holders. And the reason why this is like going to the weekly chart or the monthly chart. We start zoomed out. 
we find the areas that matter, and then we will zoom in. So we're going to start with long-term holders, run the whole exercise, and then we will slowly but surely zoom into the short-term holders. So starting with the big principles, and for many who are just a hodler, if you're just looking for cyclical behavior, the next three charts are probably all you need to see, right? We will zoom in so we can see what happens when we get smaller scale, but for most people, just on the big picture, the next three charts will really paint this, the whole story. So these th uh, these two pricing models here, one is called vaulted price, which I developed as part with uh, Dave Puel as part of the coin time economics. I won't go into the details of what it is just yet. We also have MVRV plus one standard deviation. Now you will hear me say this very often when I say plus one sigma, plus one standard deviation. This is a one standard deviation move from the mean. Now, because we're talking about MVRV, that means that investors are in a lot of profit. Both of these two metrics, the core of what they describe is like the potential energy of the system. This is when hodlers are in a sufficient amount of profit, their portfolios are green enough that they're probably going to want to start selling. Now, demand can absolutely overwhelm that sell side, but not for so long. Once we get into this green zone, we are in the euphoric phase of the bull. This is where it gets increasingly unstable. We may not top here, we may not top here, we may not top here, but we are going to top somewhere in this zone because this is where these guys are in enough profit, they're gonna start locking them in. And at some point that will oversaturate demand. So in many ways, we wanna be very cautious when we're up in this zone. We can see that the ETF got us up into this territory. Now, this currently sits above the all time high between about 79,000 and 88,000. So, you know, that's, we can kind of imagine that if we got up into that zone, investor behavior will start to shift towards sell side. It doesn't mean that the top will be in at these levels, but it means that the probabilities are edging ever and ever and ever closer towards that top being established. Now, of course, this doesn't necessarily mean global top. We can have interim tops, right? Local peaks that then pull back. We can have local peaks that sell off, local peaks that sell off, and then eventually there's a global. In this instance, we're not trying to distinguish between these two. We're just looking for points where investor behavior is likely to shift. And then for me as a hodler, I don't particularly want to be buying when we've blown all the way outside the top of this price model because things are getting pretty steamy in here, right? That's when things are getting a little bit too overheated for my liking. I want to see the market cool off, right? Locally cool off, globally cool off, right? Bear markets, corrections, this is the concept. So really at a big picture, this is the zone where we expect investor behavior to change. Why does it change? Because their portfolio is green enough. They're in enough profit that they're probably going to start taking chips off the table. Now, to really put a uh, kind of a, a bit of evidence, let's say, towards that, what we're looking at here is net realized profit or loss. This is essentially the first derivative or the gradient of realized cap. So when it's positive and high, this means that lots of capital is coming in. Lots of people are buying coins that were coming from a lower cost basis and being sold at a higher one. Profit taking is literally the opposite of buy side, right? Someone taking profit is someone else coming in and buying a fresh coin. Now, just at a very, very high level, notice that net profit or realized profit peaks in and around price peaks. This is the sell side that actually stops the bulls in their tracks. Bulls come in and keep buying and there is capital inflow. That's why we can have sustained periods of profit taking, but too much profit taking, everything in moderation, too much is what puts the top in. So if I'm just thinking about this as a hodler, if I want to avoid FOMO, this thing being positive and green is good, right? It's not the worst thing. That means capital is coming in. When it's really high, it's telling me that there are too many people selling right now. It's probably going to hit a local or global peak in the near future. Probably not the best time for me to be starting to stack sats, let alone at some kind of a margin account and really levering up. When this is green and at a high level, it means too many people are taking profit. Probably not the best sign. A much better idea is to look for when it's cooled off. And those people who did buy high and didn't listen to that actually bought high and then they panic sell low. Right? The reason that we get these realized losses here is that people who bought the all-time high are currently panic selling back here in August. 
So you can see that they much like a SOPA or an MVRV reset, very much in the same character. We're waiting for people who don't know what they're doing to buy high and sell low. And me as a hodler, I want to buy low and then sell high. That's the nature of the beast. So just kind of mapping on that when we're above those price levels that we saw before, almost always there's that incentive becoming actual sell side, right? The incentive is there, they start to sell as well. So the long-term holder cohort is really, if we're going to zoom out and look at the big picture, long-term holders are almost like looking at the monthly chart or the weekly chart. They are the most active around extremes. Now, the chart we're looking at at the moment is just realized profit by short, by, sorry, by long-term holders. Now, I've also got in orange and red, plus one standard deviation and plus two standard deviation. Now, this is on a very long-term window. So really what we're looking for, the price chart will go orange and red when a lot of profit is being taken. Mr. Hodler, check the Hodler, probably doesn't want to buy when we've got a two sigma volume of profit getting taken by long-term holders, people who've held their coins for a long time. I don't particularly want to buy off a long-term holder. I want to be the long-term holder. I want to make the same decisions or at least put my decision framework in line with what these guys are doing. So when they're not locking in large profits, it's usually during bear markets and corrections and they're sitting tight, they're doing nothing, right? There's obviously the realized loss side of the equation, but let's just stick with profit for now. I don't particularly want to be buying my Bitcoin when lots of long-term holders are taking fat profits off the table. They're going to overwhelm supply at some demand at some point in time, not the best time. So just understanding when we're above these levels, me personally, I'll sit back and I'll let the market find its next equilibrium and assess it. Right? You know, you can start to zoom into the short-term holders then and do a bit more analysis, which we'll get to. But for now, this is not really the best time to be uh, to be accumulating. Now, if we look at where we currently are, long-term holder realized profit has declined significantly and he's pulling back quite a bit. This is telling you that they've stopped taking profit. They're waiting for the next leg higher. I know this when I look at, at the, when I see myself in this data, I'm a long-term holder. I'm not taking chips off the table at 61K. I'm waiting for long-term, you know, higher prices, even if that takes a year, if it takes two years, whatever it is, I'm waiting for higher prices. This is not my price. And we're seeing this happening across the board. So overall, high conviction holders right now is kind of the opposite of what we saw back at the ETF all-time high. There is very little profit taking going on. And therefore, I feel much more comfortable right now about being a, you know, a sat stacking hodler, much more comfortable now, certainly compared to March. Okay, so that's real. So thanks, folks, for tuning in for part one of our weekly analysis. If you enjoyed the video and you want access to the full video and the rest of our analysis, do head over to our Substack and hit subscribe. As a paying member, you'll actually get access to a second piece of analysis each week, as well as the comment section where you can ask me questions and we'll answer them in a Q&A on a regular basis. So thank you so much for all of your support. We hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.